Thank you. I'm going to start with my thank yous because I'm likely to forget them. So just um, thanks to the MSF team, the healthcare workers in the local clinics in Kailicha and the patients in Kailicha who are really trying very hard to fly the palliative flag um, high. And so this morning we're going to talk about palliative care within the drug resistant TB program. And really the question is why would we even want to talk about palliative care? But the reality is that we're facing um, is that drug resistant TB remains a major source of mortality and morbidity. And in South Africa, treatment is successful in only about half of our patients. And the Kaya Leecha, let's see if the pointer works. Um, the Kaya data echoes what's happening globally and in South Africa. So if you look at the purple, you'll see that it is the number of our mortalities and our success rates remain low in terms of the blue and the orange. Um, it remains under 50%. So why should we bother with palliative care? Because in our traditional view, we give everything we can at the beginning of um, a patient's treatment journey. So we are going to go for new drugs, better regimens, um, shorter periods, the best adherence you can find, because if all doesn't work out, we can just refer this patient for palliative management at the end. Um, but this is in complete contradiction to what the WHO says about what palliative care is. It is actually an approach that improves the quality of life for patients and their families facing problems associated with life-threatening illness. And the method is basically prevention and relief of suffering. And really good assessment and treatment of symptoms like pain, coughing, other problems. And we look at the patient from a physical, psychosocial, and spiritual perspective. And so the true pace of palliative care is right alongside our curative interventions. Um, and this is a problem for some because palliative care means end of life and people struggle. So actually, we don't care what you call it. Call it supportive care, call it holistic care, call it patient-centered care, is provide good assessment for all symptoms for these patients. And so how do we do this? So we have a case description. Basically, um, this is a journey of a 23-year-old male who uh, lives within Kailicha. And how, how the services in Kailicha works that it's completely decentralized. All care happens at the local clinic. And so whether you're starting treatment or your treatment has failed you, you will still get care at the local clinic. And so no home-based care is provided. So this young man is living with his family in a home. There is some issues between him and his mom and dad. Um, and then also the mom was quite concerned about the other kids in the family. What was happening with this young man, he was at his fourth um, treatment episode. And the previous episode failed because of various issues. But now in his fourth episode, again, the treatment was failing. And his only options for a better regimen or other treatment options was going inside a hospital. He really distrusted the hospital system. And he, when we spoke to him, he basically says, I refuse all care. I don't want anybody to do anything for me. Um, MSF, and there's a great local doctor who really sat down with us and said, what can we do? I can't reach this patient. He's at home. His family you know, got the police to take him to clinic and force him to treatment. Um, and that's how we got involved. So when we spoke to him, he was a well-spoken man. He appeared weak and timid. He was struggling with shortness of breath, and he was adamant. He understood the consequences of not taking treatment, but he did not want treatment. OK, so we did a needs assessment. And really, from a physical perspective, he had shortness of breath, coughing, pain, and we provided him with a morphine at home. From a psychosocial perspective, he had financial concerns, and we worked with social department to make sure he got a stipend. Um, we sat down with the family and really worked with the family to understand this patient's choice versus what the family's concerns were. And the family came to an agreement with the patient. Um, and we gave the patient um, spiritual counseling. In terms of the family's concern around infection control risk, um, family members were up, were, could go to the clinic for screening. And the family were also provided with M3 um, respirators. And were, we had a plan for the family on how they could stay safe and still be with their son towards the end of days. Um, and so we tried to stick through with the four ethical um, principles of ethics. And really, the patient had autonomy. The patient could um, choose what he wanted for his treatment. Um, beneficence, the medical team acted in the best interest of the patient, but the family as well. So both were listened to. 
Non-maleficence, first do no harm. We ensured that the environment was safe for the family, that it was in and justice. Despite the patient's refusal of drug-resistant TB care, he was not refused care. And so conclusions and takeaway message in this case in terms of palliative care is that palliative care is an essential with drug-resistant TB treatment ma um, management. And palliative care policies and implementation plans really require resources. Something needs to be done in the home. Um, partnership with social and legal agencies, home-based nursing and counseling services, and access to palliative care medicine. Thank you.